I'm making this video for Ford Focus Electric. Um, this one's a 2017. In case anybody's curious of what they're made of. Um, they have some basic components. There's an upper battery pack and a lower battery pack. The upper battery pack is in the passenger compartment. The lower battery pack is underneath the car in the rear seat area. There is a BCM here, a battery energy, battery electronics control module. It's integrated in its upper pack. There's also a BCCM, which is the battery charge control module. And then the rest of the components are basically under the hood with what we see here. So I'll kind of review those. Um, probably best to talk about how, how it kind of works. So the power source is the battery power that comes from that cable back there. It comes up around through here and makes it to this connector here. So this is high voltage DC, about 364 volts at a full charge. Uh, this box here Ford calls an EVCC, electric vehicle computer controller. I would have called it a high voltage distribution module because I believe that's what it does. It distributes the high voltage electricity, the high voltage DC. <laughs> what it would do is when the module t is told to activate, when you start try to turn your car into ready mode, there's some electronics in here that will decide to close the contactor. And it'll close some co two contactors and it'll connect this terminals to these two terminals, which has the effect of providing DC power to this module, which is called the transmission control module or TCM. That module sits on top of the transaxle motor or the traction motor where you would normally find a transaxle in a, in a standard car. This module, this uh, transition control module is an inverter or converter. So it can invert the 360 volt DC into three phase AC, which is what drives the motor and propels the car either forwards or backwards. Um, it could also convert, so it could also harness energy, which would turn the motor into a generator. And, it, and so it can recapture energy for like regenerative braking. And in that, in that mode, it would send DC power back up through these lines, which has a net effect of, of recharging the battery. Uh, it could also split off some power. It could split off 40 amps, 40 amps and 20 amps. This first 40 goes to a PTC, which is a cabin heater. And you might be able to see it. It's a, it's a box down below there, right there that box there and that has some resistive type heaters in it and uh, it'll heat the coolant which will go to the heater core and with a fan blows over it will we'll heat the passenger compartment um, this connector runs down through here down to there you can kind of see the connector the orange connector there and b below that area is the air conditioning compressor so there's also an ACCM, which is an air conditioning control module, which is bolted to the back of that compressor, or maybe the front. Um, that's how that gets powered, it's DC powered. And then the third one runs to this module here, which is the DC to DC converter. And what that does is it takes some of the high voltage DC, steps it down to low voltage, or in this case, about 14 and a half volts. And it comes out this terminal here, which runs through these cables and ends up charging your 12 volt battery. And the 12 volt battery is used for the standard things that you're normally used to on a car. Um, power windows, power locks, uh, instrument cluster, operating the, the various modules, radio, uh, things of that nature, blower fans, stuff like that. So you still need to have the 12 volt battery because it controls all the systems um, that is used for the high voltage electricity. So that's kind of how, how it works. Um, pretty simple in a way, but there's also um, a thermal management system like I mentioned before. This car has three loops. So there's a primary loop or an MECS, which is a motor electronics control system loop. And some coolant will flow from, they each have their own pump and their own valve. So the coolant will flow and cool the DC to DC converter. It'll also cool the TCM and it'll also um, cool the oil that's lubricating the traction motor. It's one system. A second system is what I mentioned earlier where there's the PTC, the, po the positive 
temperature coefficient box, which is where these hoses are connected to back here. And when that heater runs, it runs in over to the heater core and then heats the cabin and provides heat for the passengers. The third system is another system which is down, let me see, it's another loop which is controlled by this valve here. And that cools the BCCM and the battery pack. And then by default the BECM that's also back there. This device here doesn't get cooled because it really doesn't generate heat. Uh, not any more heat than, than a regular electrical box would, would generate. So what happens when you run out of battery? Um, well, the same as in an internal combustion engine, when you run out of gasoline or fuel, you got to refuel it. So these cars um, can refuel through the refueling port here. There's a standard um, J1772 connector. These can be level 1 or level 2. And then this car also has a DC to DC charging option. So you can use one or the other, but you can't use them both at the same time. So most people, the most common way is to charge with the AC power. This is AC here and this is DC. So AC power is the most common way. You can charge with AC power either level one or level two. Level one is basically a single line, usually about 16 amps. And level two is um, two lines. Uh, usually 16 or 24 or 32. It really all depends on uh, what the capacities are of the charger that you have on board. So with this onboard unit, this unit that's on board most all electric vehicles, or all electric vehicles, this determines how fast the car can recharge when it's using AC power. So from that port that I showed you on the side, it comes, the power comes in through this cable down here, this orange cable, and then it snakes around and then it joins that big bundle of cables that goes to the back of the car to the BCCM. And the AC power goes there, the BCCM uh, determines how much power is there, converts it to DC and recharges the, the battery. Um, people ask how long does it take to recharge? Well, it depends how far you, how much energy you've depleted since the last time you've charged. So you would wanna know how many approximate miles of range based on your driving style <clears throat> gets put back into the car for every minute or hour or, or unit of time of charging time. So in the level one scenario, if I was just using the level one, it would charge up about three, maybe four miles per hour. So if I drove, say 12 hours or 12 miles and I came back home and used level one, I could expect it to take about three to three and a half hours to charge back up for 12 miles. So really forever. The level two would charge up about 25 miles per hour of charge time. So if I drove that 12 miles and came back and plugged in to level two, it'd be about 30 minutes, charge it back up. Um, there's another option, which is DC fast charge, which I mentioned, they call it fast charge because it comes through these cables here. And when it does that, in order to charge, you know, your vehicle stopped. So these contactors are um, open and when you plug in the computer senses that there's a DC charging system connected and it closes different contactors which connects these two. So to drive the car these two are connected and also to recapture the regenerative braking these two remain connected. When the car is stopped those contactors open if you decide to DC fast charge these two contactors close and then the power that's coming in on the DC, that's already been converted to DC by the charger that's, the, that's off the car. So at the station, they've already converted their AC power to DC. So it comes in straight as DC, it's already converted, goes straight to this terminal here, which goes straight to the battery and recharges the battery. So then this becomes the charger, if you will, because this box here controls the flow of current um, to that ch to that battery in the DC mode. So this is really a DC charger where it's a power distribution module like I mentioned, but it also does regulate the ch how the charge works when it's DC charging. The BCCM that I mentioned before, that really regulates how the battery charges when it's AC supply. So, um, so that's why you have the two systems. Uh, the DC charge, 
um, by its nature because of the way it's designed. <clears throat> it's really only efficient up to about 80% of charge. So you wouldn't use it if you didn't have very much uh, battery depletion, but you would use it if you were pretty low running around and um, you found a DC charge station, you can pop yourself up to 80% pretty quick. Um, I believe it would be about 80 miles of charge, 75, 80 miles of charge in about 30 minutes, um, which is which is pretty quick. So I've only used it once, but it's nice to know it has an option to use it um, if we need to. So um, there's a little bit about the Ford Focus. Uh, hopefully this was informative and hopefully it all made sense. Thank you.